I first heard of her through a Quaker who came into my office and told me of a wonderful girl, 17 years of age, who resided near him in Pictou, Nova Scotia, and was probably the tallest girl in the world. Well, P.T. Barnum, the great American showman, was writing about this in 1869, and this was after Anna Swan had been on stage for several years. There have been several fires in Barnum's museum, two of which burned the museums to the ground, and in one case, Anna Swan was trapped on the second floor and couldn't get out. She had to be removed with a fireman's derrick that lifted her out of the window into the ground, and we know about this because it was reported of in the press. She was born in a log cabin in New Annan, Nova Scotia, on the shores of the Northumberland Strait. The region was once inhabited by the Micmac Nation, but by the day of her birth, August 6, 1846, the area's name was the only part of the Micmacs to survive. Even this was a corruption. Those Native Canadians had called the region Tikiamagook, a word that means at the place which lies across. Unable to pronounce this word, the Scotch settlers revised it so it sat much easier on the tongue, Tadamagouche. This would be Anna Swan's first encounter with revisionist history. Much more would come. After the museum burned down for the third and final time, Anna was sent to Europe for what was supposed to be a whirlwind tour. Along the way, on the boat between New York and London, she meets Martin Van Buren Bates, a former Confederate soldier who still always wears his uniform and who happens to be eight feet tall. The voyage takes six weeks, and when they step foot into London, they announce their engagement. The wedding was held at St. Martin in the Fields Church in Trafalgar Square, and was destined to be a great public event. Every day, Anna and the captain were discussed in the columns that detailed the lives of high society. In this case, the very high society, as one reporter wrote with glee. In those last days before their marriage, the two members of this very high society appeared at the theater, the opera houses, and countless parties. Time spun past her, but Anna Swan barely noticed. After all those years hiding in Barnum's museum, tomorrow held something new. So long, Anna Swan. Welcome, Anna Bates. But all of this is just trivia. See, what's really interesting about Anna is that we know nothing about her. There were no letters, there are no diaries, her husband wrote an autobiography, and she's hardly mentioned once. So historically speaking, Anna is silent. She has no voice. Which means that all these years after her death, what do we know about her? Her size. And of course, so little has changed, right? Because women are still being celebrated or demonized because of their size. And of course, this is brutally unfair. A woman is more than the sum of her measurements, and Anna is more than the sum of hers. So I'm certain for those who knew her, Anna was not just uh, a giant woman. She was a woman who happened to be a little tall. Now, what kind of woman was she? Well, it's a very good question. 